This session is all about management, reducing the effects of tectonic hazards. So we're going to look at several different different things. OK, and there's there's lots of reasons why people live in in hazardous zones. So it's often a question that people think, why do people live in, in areas with volcanoes and earthquakes? Um, so you can have a look at some of these. Some of them are, are to do with people. That's social things. Um, some of them are to do with the economy and their ability to make money. Some are environmental factors. So we look at some of these and, um, you know, if you look at number two, some places are well prepared for hazards. People feel safe. So that will be a social, a social issue. Uh, if you take there, sulfur can be mined. OK, so, um, you know, you can mind that. That's an economic issue. Uh, volcanic soils are fertile, so that's a little bit of the environment as the weathering of the volcanic rock releases potassium into the soil, which is essential for plant growth. So if you take Naples in Italy as an extensive area of olives, vines, nuts and fruit um, growing around Mount Vesuvius, which has had a volcanic eruption. Um, tourism is a popular activity in some of these areas, which um, can be very hazardous, as we unfortunately saw with White Island in, in New Zealand. Uh, Mount Etna attracts thousands of tourists every year, so you can have a think about that. That's an economic factor. Um, magma, when it cools, uh, contains a lot of minerals, so we can find copper, gold, silver, lead and zinc in these areas. There's job opportunities in these areas as well, so um, San Francisco um, is, is a massive economy globally. OK, ranks 90th in the world when compared to national economy. So people are prepared to take the risk for economic reasons. Um, there might be social things like people worship ancient spirits in, in the area and so on. So there's plenty of different reasons there why people live in in those hazardous areas. OK, and then there's other things that we can do to actually limit the damage, which gives people confidence in, in living in those areas. So if we take buildings, um, buildings are often managed to in richer countries to, to to limit the damage from earthquakes so uh, if you take uh, that one there you might have lift shafts with tension cables so that the lifts don't collapse safe areas outside where people can gather because a lot of people get injured by shattering and scattering objects um, you may have shutters come down over the windows to stop that glass breaking out id numbers on the building for helicopters rolling weights on the roof uh, there may be a lattice work of steel to stabilise the building, which was unfortunately missing in uh, in Haiti. Rubber shock absorbers on the floor, lattice work steel foundations in the bedrocks, and even some buildings have movable movable foundations. So uh, there's lots of buildings now that can be built to withstand earthquakes. Okay, um, and then you know that's that's probably one of the most famous um, examples. That was the Beijing National Stadium, which was built for the Olympics. Um, but it was built with earthquakes in mind because Beijing is prone to seismic events. The outer steel structure resists earthquake shaking very well, um, so that was built all as one entire hole. Um, however, the inside of the building was built out of concrete, which doesn't resist shaking as well. So that was split into eight individual sections to stop uh, one. If well, you know, if one section fell down, it wouldn't knock down another section. So the the eight sections were built separately. And it was built to withstand earthquakes of eight on the on the Richter scale. The other reason why people live in areas with uh, volcanoes and earthquakes is we can we can use various things to predict events. So I've just pick three. So we can use seismic waves. Um, so we can uh, spot where the volcanoes are going to erupt because often magma working its way through the Earth's crust can uh, pr produce small earthquakes and they increase in frequency and size as we approach a major uh, earthquake. And that was used with great effect in Mount Pinatubo in 1991. Um, a lot of people were evacuated from that area. It could have been a much bigger disaster. We can monitor gas emissions as well. One of the main ones is sulfur dioxide, um, measure its quantity prior to volcanic events. And we can also look at ground deformation. So um, does, is the ground swelling and um, a bulging up in parts where magma is pushing up from underneath and causing a change in the in the ground surface. So we can see that visually sometimes, sometimes we can use satellites in space to measure whether we've got um, ground deformation occurring. And then the last area is, is planning. So um, we can prepare people so that they know what to do within an earthquake or a volcanic event. Uh, we can plan for where buildings are constructed. So preventing building in vulnerable areas. Um, in, in 
insisting on having uh, deep foundations for buildings and so on uh, can really make a big difference between life and death within a, within a tectonic event. So tasks wise, you can have a look at that video there and make a list of why people live next to um, volcanoes and in um, earthquake areas. There's those slips that I went through earlier on of information. You can pop those into some sort of uh, diamond nine and decide which one's the most important reason why people live in it, hazardous areas and, and least important down at the bottom there. And then there's a table for you to fill out about um, different ways of predicting um, volcanic events. OK, you can annotate that picture to say our building features can help during an earthquake. Uh, and then there's a little review with the opinions. So you can have a think about where you stand on those statements. The um, worksheet that goes alongside it is there. OK, um, so you, you can have a look at that page there. There's a video you can put things into the table. And then the, you've got your, your ranking exercise there. Um, and then the last page there is on um, I would protect and predict using buildings and things like that. Good luck with that.